Welcome back to the wood shop. If we're just meeting, my name's Brett. Today I'll be unboxing and giving my first impressions of my new Makita 18 volt LXT lithium ion 23 gauge cordless pin nailer. My approach thus far on this channel has been as I get new tools in my shop, I try to do a tool review video. And if I'm not in too much of a hurry to use my new toy to do an unboxing as well. And this video is no exception. This is not a paid promotion or anything like that. Nobody's paying me for this review. This tool was a Christmas gift from my wife and I'm just now getting around to opening it at the end of February. I actually already had a Metabo cordless pin nailer and that worked fine for me for a while until it started acting up on me and that's why I asked for this Makita for Christmas. I'm not particularly brand loyal. I have cordless tools from most of the major brands. The only uh, battery profiles I haven't gotten into are the DeWalt and the Ryobi. But I really do like the Makita tools that I currently own and I'm hoping this pin nailer is gonna work better for me than the Metabo did. Makita was one of the first companies to come out with a cordless and hoseless pin nailer and the other was Metabo, formerly Hitachi. And those were the only two options for cordless pin nailers for quite a while. And then just recently, in the last year or so, DeWalt, Ryobi, and Craftsman have all come out with their cordless versions. I didn't even know there was a cordless DeWalt pin nailer until I started doing the research for this video. Or Ryobi or Craftsman for that matter. Obviously I don't have any of those, just the Metabo and this new Makita. So after getting this thing out of the box, we'll explore its features and then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison with the Metabo, shoot some pins in wood and see how they both perform. All right, let's get to the unboxing. Like I said, this is the Makita 23 gauge headless pin nailer, cordless, that runs on the Makita 18 volt LXT lithium ion batteries. It's model number XTP02Z, or Z, as my Canuck friends in the great white north say it, eh? This is tool only, so there's no battery or charger. I already own a set of those. All right, let's see what's in the box. Let me go ahead and read the instruction manual so I can talk about this more intelligently and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. All right, let's get this out of the cardboard. So first off, plenty of room for my big mitts. It's got this rubber over mold on the handle. That's a really nice, comfortable grip. This is the Generation 2 model. In their first iteration, I heard that Makita's pin nailer was having some problems with nails jamming and so forth. So hopefully they've fixed that with the Gen 2. From stem to stern, it's about eight and three quarters tall. Without the battery, it's right at about eight inches long. We'll get a weight a little bit later. If you notice, the top of this tool is flat, so it'll actually set by itself and it's pretty stable sitting on its top and that also means you can get up nice and close you can get down nice and tight in corners you notice there's only one trigger traditionally on pin nailers you had a, a safety so a, another trigger that you'd have to depress before pressing the actual activation switch a lot of guys would just put electrical tape on that and keep it engaged the entire time it is a, a safety feature to keep it from firing accidentally to get around that, Makita put a lockout switch right up here. It's on both sides, kind of like a drill, forward and reverse. So when you throw it in your tool bag, you can lock out the trigger so it won't fire accidentally. Down on the cartridge here, there's a big, easy to push button to open up the cartridge. This is in a nice location because you're not going to accidentally bump it and trigger that to open while you're working. And yet, yeah, it's easy to get to. The cartridge has this nice clear window so you can actually see when you're running low on nails. And this red indicator also is spring loaded so as the nails empty, the red indicator gets closer and closer so you can see when it's getting about time to reload. That's a nice feature. I wish they all had that. The cartridge has a capacity of 120 nails. I'm not sure that that's a feature because um, if it doesn't fit 200, a full strip is 100 pins. 
So it fits more than a full strip, but it doesn't fit two full strips. So I'm not sure that 120 is really a benefit. Well, you can see that the this red indicator is pushed back with pins in there. It does have a dry fire lockout so that you don't accidentally fire it uh, empty, which can damage your firing pin. Um, I'm not sure if I'm using the right terminology, but you know what I mean. We'll see when we test it out how many pins are left after that dry fire lockout. So it's got this red rubber guard to protect your surfaces. And there's a spare one on the back here. So that's nice to have. On the back of the cartridge, they included a hex key and that just stows right here. Out of the way and it's locked in nice so it won't fall out on accident. And you use that to remove these if a pin ever does jam. You can get access to the jammed up spot. There's a knob on the front here so you can fine tune your depth depending on the hardness of your wood. That's what she said. And it comes with a belt hook with a included machine screw so you can mount it on either side. And so you can wear it on either hip, depending on if you're right or left-handed. All right, let's pop a battery in here and see what else it has. We get a full charge. This is a four amp hour battery, which makes it kind of heavy. I'd probably want to use a two amp hour, something that's lighter duty and not as bulky. Um, it does feel kind of back heavy with this four amp hour battery on it, but it'll sit up pretty stable on the battery. And again, up on its head. So when you pull the trigger and it's not in contact with anything, the LED work light comes on, which as I'm getting older and my eyesight's getting worse, I do really appreciate having a work light right up by the work area. It'll come on when you press the nose or pull the trigger. And then down here, just above the battery, there's a battery indicator light. So when I pull the trigger, that comes on for a few seconds and shows one, two, or three lights. So if the battery itself doesn't have an indicator on it, which mine does, but some don't. So you have that right built into the tool as well. Let's get a weight on this. With a four amp hour battery, it comes right in at five pounds. Compare that to the Metabo with a three amp hour battery, four pounds nine ounces. A lot of that is battery. Let's see how it goes bare tool. See this Metabo doesn't want to stand up on its head. Three pounds eleven ounces bare tool on the Metabo. Same. Three pounds eleven ounces bare tool. So yeah. The battery is the weight difference on these. All right, let's shoot some nails in wood and see how they compare to one another. I'm out here in the cold and the snow to talk about the sponsor for today's video. I'm just kidding. I don't have any sponsors. Let's get back in the shop. It's cold out here. Okay, we got some pine plywood here. This is birch. This is walnut. And this is red oak. And I got my safety glasses here. Good idea to wear safety glasses. You never know when a pin might go flying astray. First we'll try the oak, and I've got one and three eighths inch pins in here, and I've got my depth all the way forward. Wow, that's stuck up way proud. And this is with the guard off. That one's better, but it's still proud. So far it's a fail. None of these are driven all the way in. Well, that sucks. What's it gonna do on pine? Pine, no problem. Going through the birch, these are just flush. A couple of them I can feel with the nail, so they're just slightly proud. The other ones are sunk all the way in, pretty much just flush with the surface. That's on birch, but walnut. 
Some of these, again, on the walnut are slightly proud. And then the rest are flush. Whoa! <laughs> I didn't really want to nail that to my surface. I should have thought of that. That's why I was going on the edge green to begin with. Yeah. Well, on the face green it did a little better. On the edge green it did not want to go in. They're still not flush, sitting proud, but they went in a lot further than the edge green. Not a fit for oak. And I ran it out of pins, so I'm just going to take the battery off and take a look and see. Well, I don't, I don't see any. Did it go all the way to zero? Anti dry fire protection, whatever. I think it took it all the way to zero pins. I don't know if that's good or bad. Okay, let's try out the Metabo. See, this is my issue. If any of you knows a way to fix that, let me know in the comments. Because it is driving the nails in. Or the pins, I should say. They're going all the way in in the oak. But I hate this, that it keeps popping open. It didn't do that the whole time, just the last few times I've used it. Pine, no problem. Birch, there. Well, there's a couple that are sitting proud. Some of this have, might have a little bit to do with the angle of approach. I'm gonna try it without the cap. Yeah, without the cap, they're all sinking in, but it is. I don't know how well you can see that. It is denting the wood a little bit more than the with that protective cap on. Can you see that? So. They both performed about the same in the birch. Let's try walnut. Wow. There are a bunch of them sticking up with the walnut. There's several sticking up with the metabo. There were a few with the makita too, but not as high. I just want to point out some of the differences on the metabo. It does have a work light, but it doesn't come on with the trigger or with pressing. There's a, a button down here and then it'll just stay on. The light switches here, the light will just stay on until you push it again or take the battery out. And it does have a battery indicator here too. And it only, that'll only stay on while you're pressing it. And there's only two lights. So it'll let you know if you get close to 50% and then zero. I don't really like the two light method. Three or four is better. And it does have the clear window with the red indicator like the Makita does. So you can see when you're running low on nails. Let me run this out and see how many pins are left after the dry fire kicks in. There we go. So you see we got quite a few pins left when it won't fire anymore. And that could just be my unit. Yeah, the Metabo leaves there's 20 pins left after it stops firing and the Makita went all the way down to zero. Another thing that's different with the Metabo is it has a, a wide protective tip and then a narrow one. And it's a little bit harder plastic than this is the Metabo, this is the Makita. Makita is a little bit squishier. Let's see what these guys will do with the three quarter inch pins. Well, most of those are sinking in the face green, except that first one. And try it without the guard on. Yeah, those are all sinking in the red oak. I'm messing up my counter. What about the edge grain? 
The shorter pins are going all the way in on both the edge grain and the face grain on the red oak, which was given the 1 and 3 8 inch pins a, a bit of a problem. So pin selection is also a factor. Let's try out the birch with Makita. All day, no problem. Yeah, without the guard on though, it does mar up the woods some more. Yeah, having this tip protector on there does make a difference with how much it mars up the wood. Definitely want to use some test pieces and dial in your, your depth setting before you go to town on your actual project. Well, as you can see, there are some applications where the 23 gauge pin nailer just might not be the right fastener for the job, especially the harder density woods. As a woodworker, my main use of the pin nailer is to hold pieces together while the glue dries, and then I may even come back and add screws as an additional fastener, depending on the project. If you're looking to purchase a cordless pin nailer, I've included links in the description to all the brands that are available so you can compare prices. And if you are looking to make a purchase, could I ask you a favor? Could you use one of those links that take you over to Amazon? Full disclosure, they are affiliate links, but that doesn't make it cost anything extra for you than if you went to Amazon directly. What it does for me is Amazon will give me a small commission on purchases made and that helps support my channel so I can continue to make more helpful videos and get me that much closer to my goal of going full time with woodworking and with YouTube. So thanks for the support. If this video was helpful to you, give it a thumbs up. And right over here, I have queued up some other videos that you might find of interest. Until next time, my friend, be safe and love each other.